All right. Sorry for the delay there. If I sound a little winded, it's because I realized, all right, time to, time to start this thing. And I looked over and I was like, oh, my mic's not even plugged in and I don't have a cable. So I had to run, grab a cable real quick and get plugged in. But we're all good now. Um, uh, good evening, everyone, or good morning, good afternoon, good night, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. Quincy Kane here, and this is a live stream number 127. And uh, we've done brackets before, but we're going to be doing something a little different today. We're going to be doing a bracket, um, but usually they go on pretty lengthy. And so I thought we would try breaking it into a two part thing. So we'll actually do a bracket, we'll finish the bracket next week. So we're going to have 16 entries, 16 nominees. We're doing a bracket for best male frontman. And uh, the uh, we're going to go through the first eight brackets today and get to the winner of that. That'll be the person who challenges the winner of the next bracket for the final victor, the winner of the entire bracket. So we'll try it out, see if it works or not. I'm not sure, but uh, usually, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the brackets. I, I mean, I think they're pretty fun, but uh, they, do, they do go on pretty lengthy. Usually by the end of it, I'm like, all right, come on. <laughs> like, let's get this done. You know, I'm starving. So uh, uh, trying to see if uh, we're going to play around with this, see if breaking it up into two parts kind of works out. So uh, so we'll give it a shot. But catching up with the chat. Hello, everyone. We got uh, I was talking with Jack a little bit and we got Silas in the chat. Hey, Silas. Good to see you. And Stan in the chat. Hey, Stan. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's see. We were just talking. Yep. Some hellos happening in the chat. Stan says, are you ready to rock? Stan always seems ready to rock. So that's uh, that's why it's good to have you in the chat. Um, let's rock like a hurricane. Silas is ready too. Um, cool, cool. Uh, and Jack says they're fun. I think referring to the bracket. So that's good. Yeah, I'm glad you're, uh, you enjoy them. I'm going to kick things off with a, uh, an instrumental here. I'm going to play a song starting off. Um, and you guys are certainly welcome to start typing up some nominations and things. Um, I got a question for you all, though. Uh, Jack and I were talking a little bit, and um, sometimes, you know, life can be, uh, we can go through phases where, where you feel a little tired. Um, I've actually felt that way, most, mostly because of trouble getting to sleep, you know, um, sleep is like an art form for me. I just gotta, I don't know there or, or a science, I guess <laughs> you know, it's like, I got to do everything just right to, to sleep well. And, um, sometimes I'll go through phases where I'm like, Hey, I've been sleeping good lately. And then sometimes not so much. And, uh, so it can be a little tricky, but I think a good reminder, you know, when you're going through those phases where you just feel, um, a bit tired and a bit worn out, I think it's good to, in a weird way, sort of slow down a little bit, but just take some time to, to find some things that, that bring you enjoyment and excitement. I think one simple thing, like for me today, uh, just exercising outside. I tend to, to exercise inside, but to be honest, I'm inside a lot. I don't always get outside and get me some vitamin D. And something about being outside, I think it actually helps with sleep too, to get outside, actually get some exposure to the sun. And I think it helps with, uh, with your sleep cycle and all that. But just getting outside and and, uh, and just kind of enjoying the moment and just uh, having fun, you know, exercising or, or skateboarding or, or whatever it might be, practicing martial arts. Um, and so maybe there's something that, that brings you um, excitement and joy. You know, I don't know. There, there, there's certain things. There's definitely different things. I'm trying to think of a few things for me specifically. Like, you know, going to the skate park once a week. That's, like, that's kind of like one of my main things. That's going to the skate park is kind of my way of just getting my mind off of everything else and just saying, okay, let's just have fun at the skate park. Let's not worry about, you know, my career. Let's not worry about responsibilities or anything like that. Let's just go to the skate park and, and get my mind on that. And that actually sort of refreshes your mind so that you can go back to those responsibilities and those things that you're working towards and, uh, and hit them with, uh, you know, with, with, with more, uh, power, I guess, you know, how am I trying to phrase that? You, you work better, you know, rather than grinding yourself to a halt and just exhausting yourself by giving yourself a chance to refresh and recharge. You can come back to the thing you were working on, um, with, and actually do a better job with it. So it's important to kind of take that time away. I also enjoy a good movie. Movies are inspiring to me, specifically good ones, not just any movie, but just taking time. It's hard to take time to watch a movie, but if I got time, sometimes I, I'll just say, Hey, I know I got stuff to do, but I'm going to take some time to watch a movie just because I need something to, um, to just excite me, to just something to, uh, to inspire me and, and put a fire in me. And so those are a couple of things for me, you know, movies and skateboarding, that kind of stuff. Um, and of course, you know, writing songs, but what about you guys? What are some things that excite 
you? What are some things that uh, that bring you joy and uh, just just put energy and you bring energy out of you? Um, let me know. I'm going to kick things off with an instrumental here, and uh, and then we'll be diving into the bracket in a bit. And again, like I said, uh, you can answer that question, but also at the same time, if you want to go ahead and uh, throw out some nominations for uh, some contenders for best frontman, uh, particularly in rock and metal, um, feel free to type that up. This one's just an instrumental. Hope you like it. rocky at the end there, but you know, you get the idea. All right. So for anyone kicking in, kicking in, <laughs> yeah, for anyone kicking in, for anyone just joining us, don't be shy. Say hello. We were kicking things off with, uh, with an instrumental and we're about to get into our bracket here. So I'm going to bring that up. I've already got a few nominees, but uh, I I've got eight. So I've got eight filling up the uh, half of the total 16. So we've got room for eight more uh, nominations. But let's catch up with the chat first, and then we'll get things started with that. Um, yep, some hellos. Uh, good to see you, Quincy. Good to see you too, Silas. Always appreciate you tuning in. Um, I'm loving the tune in... Uh, loving the tune in next week. Oh, oh, the tune in next week and see who wins. Uh, okay, cool. So Stan, Stan's down for it. He likes that idea. So, um, yeah, you guys will have to let me know what y'all think. You know, do you prefer... The brackets is one segment, or is this cool? You know, uh, you'll have to let me know if it sounds good to tune in next week to see who the who the champion is, who who gets the crown. You know, um, so we'll have to see. Uh, Silas says, "Nice stuff, awesome. Uh, appreciate that." I don't know if you were talking about my the things I was sharing earlier or, or the instrumental track I just played, but Jack says, "I'm not really sure anymore. Um, I always look forward to your streams." Well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad my streams can hopefully be a little little something to bring you some some excitement, some joy, and and uh, some energy to your life. I guess it's the nitty gritty of the, the MS, uh, that it is, uh, progressive. So walking was always going to get better. Um, I used to, I used to love park walks, love park walks. Uh, well, yeah, you should, uh, you should do that more. You should treat yourself. You should go for park walks. And, uh, I know, you know, I know you have some health issues and maybe that might be challenging, but if you can find some way, even if you just go to sit at a park or something, you know, maybe just, um, get out a little bit and find a place to, uh, yeah, just a new setting just to sort of enjoy. And, um, it doesn't, you know, I, uh, you know, I like to be active. I like to be, ex um, you know, adventurous and, and, and do like outgoing explosive kind of things like skateboarding or exercise or whatever. But, um, it doesn't have to be that. It could be something calm in a, in a strange way. Calmness can still be energizing. You know what I mean? Like there can be something very calm, like just being on the beach and like just, you know, hearing the waves and, and like on a nice windy day, um, that can be like very calming, but kind of like just sort of energize you like, man, I really like this setting. It just, it just lifts my spirits, you know? And so, um, you know, maybe try that. Maybe just find like a nice setting, like a nice park to go to or someplace um, that's a little, you know, out of the norm, just something that, uh, that you don't see every day and, uh, and see how that works. 
uh, walking was always going to get harder. Yep, yep. Um, and yeah, uh, Stanley says, like Unplugged. Um, I had actually mentioned Unplugged earlier, so I'm going away this weekend with, uh, uh, with our youth group, our church's youth group, and uh, we've got an event called Unplugged, and that's actually kind of the, the whole point of Unplugged. The reason it's called that, the idea is to take a weekend away to unplug from social media, unplug from uh, you know, uh, texting and, and, and the internet and all that stuff, and uh, it's, it's a campsite. But uh, they, they have lots of activities there, and it's just, it's just a week to focus on, on God, a week to focus on friendships and relationships, and, um, and just kind of getting your mind off of the, you know, the busyness and all the distractions of day-to-day life, and just kind of taking a weekend getaway to sort of um, reset yourself a little bit, kind of kind of autocorrect, you know, <laughs> kind of get yourself back on track. And uh, I think it's important to do that from time to time. So um, I think Stan's looking forward to it. I hope, uh, I hope Logan's feeling better. I know Logan was feeling a little sick, but I hope he's going to be well enough to go on the trip. Um, yeah, we'll be heading out tomorrow for that. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that myself. Silas says, for me, I love movies. Uh, getting musical, uh, like playing guitar and singing. Um, yep, that sounds like me, man. You know, like I, movies inspire me. I love a good movie. And then, yeah, just being musical, um, especially like playing music that I enjoy. You know, I do, I do a lot of music and, um, you know, I help with the church and, and that's great. Like, I, you know, I love doing that. But when I really just play like a song that means something to me, um, or, or especially songwriting. Like I love being creative with music that that's when I really come alive. You know, that's, that's what I love that. Um, that just brings me a lot of joy. So, um, let's see, we're going to get our bracket going here. Let me bring up the window. Here we go. So I'll start talking about, um, some of the nominees already had. Um, and let's see, Silas was saying, uh, my siblings who are 14, 11, and 8 go to a co-op for school, and we are camping this weekend with that group. Wow, same weekend. Well, <laughs> well, Jack, maybe you need to go camping this weekend. You know, everyone else is doing it. <laughs> um, and then, uh, let's see, Quincy says, uh, sorry, I had to get a speaker, um, get my speaker, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by that. I don't know if you left the chat for a moment or, or what, but anyway, Jack, um, how about D Snyder? We're not going to take it, uh, was the Gen X cry, um, of, of discontent, uh, discontent, I think. Um, yeah, we can add that one to the list. So, uh, we'll add D Snyder. Now, real quick, just to clarify, when we say front man, we're not just talking about, uh, singer. Singing is obviously going to be a part of it. You know, we, ideally someone who has a nice voice, but we're looking for someone who just owns the stage and someone who just, you know, has like a character to them or, um, or just a strong presence. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to be the most outgoing person. That might be the case, but some people, they just, you know, there's some people that just have like a, an authority about them, even, even when they're barely doing anything. They can just be standing there and just the way they, they just look around, it just kind of commands energy from the crowd or something. Um, and so, uh, yeah, just we're, we're kind of considering uh, stage presence as well. So I added D. Snyder to the list, and uh, we've got room for plenty more nominations, and hopefully we'll get a few more people uh, in. We don't have to fill all these right away. We might even wait. Like, I might even play another song just to see if a few more people show up. Uh, okay, so Stan, you said, I'm outside, had to run to my room and get it, um, but... I didn't know that, you know, it's like just cause you're gone for a moment and then you had to come back and get your speaker. You don't have to apologize for that. Like I, I, I'm not like, where'd Stan go? <laughs> you know, just, I just figured you were just listening, you know? So, uh, you don't have to explain yourself. You're okay, man. All right. Um, catching up. So here are my nominations and, uh, we got room for plenty more. Um, so first off, we got Howard Jones, formerly of Killswitch Engage. I think he's got another band. And to be honest, I'm not sure that I'm the biggest fan of the current band he's a part of. I'm not even sure what band he's currently a part of. And I know he did a, uh, a collaboration with Jared Dines a while back. I don't know if you know who that is, but he's kind of a, a big YouTuber, especially in the metal scene. And they, I think they put out an album together, and there were a couple songs on that that I really liked. But Howard Jones... Um, I've actually got an, an interesting matchup here. I've got Howard Jones and Jesse Leach. The reason this is an interesting matchup is because these were both front men for Kill Switch Engage. So here's the story for those of you who don't know. Jesse Leach was the original front man. 
started with the band. You know, they, they got off to a good start. They were starting to get some traction. Um, but Jesse had a lot of personal things going on. And one day he just disappeared. Like he just walked away <laughs> like, and they were like, where'd Jesse go? And you know, that I, I'm not totally sure the details. I don't know if they were freaking out cause they couldn't get a hold of him or if they could get a hold of him and he just, uh, no explanation, just kind of left the band. Um, I think he just was trying to get away, kind of trying to find himself. Um, so they needed a new vocalist, um, and Howard Jones came in. Now, when Howard Jones came in, that's sort of when I discovered Killswitch Engage. So I sort of, uh, I got into Killswitch Engage through Howard Jones. So I love Howard Jones. I might have a little bit of bias towards him. Um, he was with the band for a while, but eventually he too um, was looking for something different and, uh, and, and left the band. And if anyone was going to replace Howard, I'm actually glad that it was... Jesse, he ended up coming back, the original vocalist. Jesse Leach came back. He's like, hey, guys, I'm sorry. Um, you know, I got some things figured out, and uh, if you're willing, you know, I'd like to try again, and they tried things out, and he is now the current uh, lead vocalist for the band. Um, and they're both great. I, I love both vocalists. I'm not like, you know, sometimes people try to team them up like Howard versus Jesse, and uh, no, they're both great, you know. I, I, I love both of them. There's certain strengths and weaknesses. I will admit I probably have a bias towards Howard Jones. Um, but if I'm being honest, I think, I think Howard might be the better vocalist, but I think Jesse might write better lyrics. Um, so they kind of, they kind of both have their strengths and weaknesses, but they're both phenomenal frontmen. So, uh, I think it'd be fun to kind of, uh, put them in the same bracket and we'll see if they, uh, uh, end up facing each other. They're not the first ones, uh, back to back, but, but we'll see. Catching up with the chat. Um, uh, let's see. Silas says, uh, I've been thinking about who to nominate right now. I might go with Axel Rose from Guns N' Roses. I think that's a good um, good nomination. Let me put Axel Rose. Yeah, that sounds like a good one. Uh, I've got Chris Cornell on here. Chris Cornell has done a few projects. I think originally he was with um, Soundgarden. I think that's how he started. And then he did Audio Slave. Um, that's probably my favorite project that he did. And then I think he had some solo stuff, which has been good. And um, man, I loved Chris Cornell's singing voice. Um, I don't know. He, he was so great. And it's unfortunate. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, unfortunately he... Uh, 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 you know, we, we, we lost him to suicide, and, and I always hate that. And there's a few vocalists on here that, unfortunately, we have lost to that. And that just, I don't know, that just breaks my heart. I just hate that someone can be going through something and, and just feel hopeless or, or feel like there's no purpose in, in life and, and feel like that that's the best choice for them to make in the moment. And uh, um, it actually wasn't really till after that that I realized um, how much I actually appreciated him. Like, I, I, I kind of heard a few songs, and then once I realized, like, Wait, there's a lot of songs by this guy that I really like, and and uh, and I love his singing voice. But he um uh he was a good one, and um I definitely look up to him a lot. So Chris Cornell got him on there. Uh, we got uh Pukey in the chat. Appreciate you tuning in. Bruce Dickinson, Iron Maiden. Yeah, I think that's a good uh good nominee right there. So we're gonna add Bruce Dickinson to the list. There we go. Yep, we still got room for a few more nominations. Um, yep, and some hellos. Yep, R.I.P. Chris. He had a great voice. Yep, indeed he did. Um, and then, sadly, I, I know I got these back to back, but here's a few other you know great vocalists that we we since lost. Um, Chester Bennington, another favorite of mine from Lincoln Park, and um, just such power and emotion in his voice. Um, and Lincoln Park was just such a big band. They 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 still are pretty influential um, where they're at right now. But uh, Chester Bennington was another favorite of mine. After that, we got Kurt Cobain, and uh, Kurt Cobain, I think, is just one of those guys that is like, uh, kind of like Chris Cornell, where he's just effortless, effortlessly cool, you know, <laughs> like, he doesn't have to try, which I would, you know, that might be a bit of an oxymoron, because I think being cool is supposed to be effortless, like, if you're trying to be cool, it's not, you know, <laughs> like, you either are or you aren't, you can't try to be, it just comes off as phony, but th those are two guys that definitely... Um, just their kind of attitude, just kind of easygoing. They just um, gave off such a such a cool vibe. But uh, I, th I think he was a great front man. And kind of like what we're doing with Howard Jones and Jesse Leach, we kind of got that going on here with Kurt Cobain and Dave Grohl. As you might know, Dave Grohl was the drummer for Nirvana and then later went on to start his own project with Foo Fighters, and he's the front man for that. And um, Dave Grohl is, I mean, he's a rock star, man. He, uh, 
he just knows how to own a stage and knows how to engage with the crowd and knows how to rock out. So he's a good one. Um, let's see here. And then I've got two more on here that, that were from me. Um, we got Freddie Mercury from Queen. Um, Queen, I think, just writes some great songs, some great catchy songs. And Freddie Mercury just had a lot of charisma about him. And uh, yeah, I think he was a good frontman, good vocalist. And so I think he is a contender. Uh, worthy of this list. And then lastly, I've got Gerard Way from uh, My Chemical Romance. And he's someone, uh, I think he I think he definitely, you know, he kind of has some theatrics to him when he, when he performs live, but especially when you see him like in music videos, just in music videos, he was a very good front man and just how expressive he was. That's, that's kind of what I know him more from. Um, I will say when I was trying to choose some, it was actually kind of hard because there's a lot of vocalists I like and there's a lot of bands I like. But not all of them are necessarily like, uh, not all of them stand out as, oh, the front man is like, you know, he is the star of the show. That's not always the case. Sometimes they're a good band and, and they have a good vocalist. But yeah, uh, it's not always that the front man just stands out um, uh, like some of the, the nominees that we have here. So those were mine. And then uh, we got D. Snyder from Jack. Um, we have a nomination for Silas, uh, Axel Rose, um, and then another nomination for Bruce Dickinson. I think that was from Pukey. Um, and then, yeah, Stan is saying David Lee Roth, so I think that'd be a good one. Jack says, I was thinking David Lee Roth, but uh, but I only remember him from Van Halen's 1984. Uh, but he's probably a good one to add to this list. Uh, David Lee Roth. All right, so those are some of the nominees that we have right now. We still have room for more, but I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to dive into another song here, and then uh, we'll take up a few more nominees and, and get the bracket started. Now, for anyone who just tuned in, just to clarify, we're trying something a little different with the brackets this time. We're going to try making this a two-part thing, because usually um, I enjoy the brackets, but I think they, they go on a little longer than I'd like, and I'm usually trying to rush to wrap it up by the end of it. So we're going to get all the nominees today, but we're only going to do the first half of the brackets and we'll do them through to the end and see who the winner of the first half is and then that winner will take on next week we'll do the second part of the bracket we'll see who the winner of that is and then the two winners will compete and we'll see who the ultimate victor is for this bracket uh we'll try it out see if it works or not you know we'll see how what you guys think of it but anyway we still got room for a few more nominations but let me go ahead and play one more song for you guys, and uh, and then I think we will actually start the voting. We'll finish up the nominees and start the voting. So, uh, give me just a second here to get my backing track set up. All right. So, I'm gonna play a song for you all. This is one I wrote and released a while back. Speaking of which, I got a song coming out at the end of this month, April 29th. Some of you have heard me talk about that, Brothers to the End. I, uh, exciting stuff, literally today. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in the mastering stage, so I'm pretty much finishing up the mix. And um, I've kind of got an exercise for myself. I'm trying to do a better job at, uh, at meeting deadlines, so I'm pretty determined to get this song out by the 29th. Um, it's, it's a little, it's going to take some exercise, because there's part of me that's, that knows I could do a better job, but... I'm out of time, you know, <laughs> so I got to do the best I can with the time I have and then uh, just take what I learned from that and, and uh, do better with the next project. So that's kind of the, the goal. That's sort of the mindset I'm trying to implement, especially so I can get more songs out this year. But I'm hopeful for it. There's a lot of things that I think are better than my old mixes. And then there's a few things that I tried out and um, I don't know. We'll see how they turn out. But I'm hopeful. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it's coming out. But I already got the album cover for it and um, getting that all set up. And so hopefully next week I'll be actually distributing, distributing it, getting the video made, and then uh, the official release of the song will be the 29th. So. But until then, this is an older song that I released a while back. It is available on Spotify, but I'm going to play it for you live this evening or whatever time it is wherever you are in the world. Hope you like it. This is A Place to Call Home. Inside of me, 
concealing what I believe The potential is obvious But I'm too scared to set it free Break down the walls Show me your heart This is the place Where I fall apart You told me I'm A place to call home Promised a destiny But I won't trust what I cannot see So mother will tuck me in To this coffin and bury me Break down the walls Show me your heart This is the place Where I fall apart You told Again, that one was called A Place to Call Home. And I have released that song. So if you enjoyed it, it is available on Spotify or wherever you like to listen to music. So I'll post a link for you in case you'd like to check that one out again. Let me grab it and uh, yeah, then you can check that out at your convenience. Let's catch up with the chat here for anyone just tuning in. Don't be shy. Say hello. We're going to be uh, doing a bracket. This is part one of, uh, of the best male frontman. Um, I guess that, yeah, that might be a little redundant there, but uh, you know what I mean. Best frontman bracket. Uh, let me get that up, and we're going to dive into that. So catching up with the chat first. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. Some hellos. Um, Jack says Freddie Mercury is a good choice. Mm-hmm. Uh, David was all about the show. Yep, so that probably makes him a good choice. Maybe Mick Jagger, the Rolling Stones, is pretty, are pretty iconic. Yeah, he might be a good one. Um, let's see here. Uh, no way, awesome. Brothers is like a staple for me. Well, awesome. Well, I'm glad you're looking forward to that one. And yes, um, I'm pretty determined to, uh, to have it released by the end of this month on the 29th. So I'm uh, glad you're looking forward to that. If apathy could be counted, maybe Liam Gallagher from Oasis should qualify. Uh, potentially. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed. Uh, if he's the front man, you know, I'd, I'd say it's fair game. Uh, I'm not super familiar with, with Oasis, um, Oasis's <laughs> material. I've certainly listened to some Oasis, but uh, I'd have to revisit them to, uh, to really be familiar with them. Stan says, sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you for the emojis, Jack. Uh, thank you for the applause, uh, Pukey. Um, 
foundation song here. Uh, nowhere, to, nowhere to go but up. Well, appreciate that. Yep. Yeah, got to start somewhere, you know. <laughs> Silas says, awesome, thank you. That song is timeless, never gets old. Well, thank you. I'm, I appreciate that, Stan. All right, yeah, so if anyone's just tuning in, this is part one of our best frontman bracket. We've already got a few nominees. I'll go through them really quickly, but we've got uh, two vocalists that at one point were vocalists for the band Kill Switch Engage. We've got Howard Jones and Jesse Leach. We've got Chris Cornell, Chester Bennington, uh, Kurt Cobain, Dave Grohl. We've got Freddie Mercury, uh, Gerard Way, and we've got Dee Snyder. Um, Axel Rose, Bruce Dickinson, David Lee Roth, and we've got room for one, two, three, four more nominees. So if anyone has not yet made a nomination, um, I'd like to hear. I know I know Jack suggested a few more, and I'll, I'll grab yours if we are in need of more. We're going to try to get the bracket going in a moment here, so I'm not going to wait too much longer. But um, Pukey, I don't think you... Ma- oh, you said Bruce Dickinson. Okay. So I think everyone has said at least one. Um, so sure, yeah, if everyone's got uh, a second choice, feel free to make it, you know. Um, so I'll go ahead, I'll add Mick Jagger as Jack's second choice. Mick Jagger. And uh, Stan, Pukey, Silas, if there's a second choice that you guys can think of, feel free to do it. Um, I don't want to drag this out any longer than it has to be. Um, that's that's part of the reason we're doing two parts is because these, uh, these brackets can, can go on pretty lengthy. And, you know, it's fun when you get a lot of people, but, um, uh, you know, you, sometimes you just you got to get the, the ball rolling, you know. Um, if anyone shows up later, they can still vote. They might not be able to nominate, but they can vote with the list we do have. Stan says, got to do it, James Hatfield. You know, I had a feeling that uh, James Hatfield was going to be mentioned. <laughs> so uh, I, was, I was already anticipating that. But uh, I think that's a good choice. I think that's a very solid choice. And I think he is someone who has a lot of, uh, who, who has a very, very good, like dominant kind of stage presence. So I think that's a good one. Um, Silas, Pukey, if y'all got a second choice, feel free to, uh, uh, to share it now. Um, and uh, in the meantime, just to keep you guys uh, up to date. So like I said, yes, I do have a song coming out at the end of the month. Looking forward to releasing that. And um, and then after that, I, I think I've got um, a stripped down song coming pretty soon. Actually, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll give you guys sort of a little, uh, little uh, you know, sneak peek. But the song I just played, A Place to Call Home, I am planning to release a stripped down version of that song. And I've actually already recorded it. Uh, I think I, I think I did both the, yeah, I think I did the guitar and the vocals for it. So all I got to do, I just got to edit, I got to process it, and um, uh, you know, I, I, there's a few more steps before it's released. But I think I've already recorded it, so it's it's just about ready to go. If anyone's just tuning in, don't be shy. I, I think I see we've got a few more viewers here. We've actually got room for two more nominations. So uh, if you're just tuning in and you have not made a nomination yet, uh, definitely want to give you guys a chance before we actually kick off the bracket. So we're doing a, this is part one, we're doing a bracket for best uh, front man, and um, we're going to do the first half of the bracket uh, in this uh, episode, and then next week we will conclude with the second half of the bracket and announce the victor of the entire bracket. So we do have Alice Cooper mentioned, and I think I'm going to add that, but I just want to, in case we do have some new viewers, I want to give them a chance to make a nomination, but if, uh, if no one speaks up in the next few moments here, we'll add Alice Cooper to the list. Uh, I think that's a good suggestion. Um, but anyone just tuning in, we've got Howard Jones, formerly of Kill Switch Engage, uh, Jesse Leach, currently of Kill Switch Engage, We've got Chris Cornell, uh, Chester Bennington of Linkin Park, Kurt Cobain of Nirvana, Dave Grohl of Foo Fighters, Freddie Mercury of Queen. We've got Gerard Way of My Chemical Romance. We've got D. Snyder, and you'll have to forgive me. I think I forget which one D. Snyder was from. Uh, was it uh, We're Not Gonna Take It? It was Gen X Cry. I know the song, We're Not Gonna Take It. But I can't say I know the band that sings it, unless D. Snyder was the name of the uh, the, the group. <laughs> so, um, we got Axl Rose from uh, Guns N' Roses, Bruce Dickinson um, from uh, Drawing a Blank, Iron Maiden. That's right. Um, and then David Lee Roth. <laughs> Sorry, a lot of these names I know, and then I always forget like which which band they're associated with. Uh, David Lee Roth. Um, with Van Halen, I think. And um, then we got Mick Jagger and James Hatfield of Metallica. And we've got room for two more nominations if no one has made a nomination yet. 
Uh, let's see here. Alice Cooper. Yep, good choice. Twisted Sister. Yeah, I think. Um, love you, man. Uh, if you watch him live, uh, he really gets with the crowd. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, good front man for sure. D. Snyder. Okay, it's from Twisted Sister. I got gotcha. you. Good to know. I was debating between a few. I'm thinking John Foreman. Yeah, John Foreman of Switchfoot, and uh, he's done some solo stuff too. So, um, All right, well, I think we're going to go with that. I think we're going to add Alice Cooper and John Foreman, and then we will kick things off. Now, just to clarify, um, obviously vocals are going to be part of this, but we're not just judging who's the best singer. We are judging who's the best frontman. Um, and so we are considering stage presence, you know, like how, how much presence do they have in, in, in front of the camera and on stage and how they interact and how they perform, how entertaining are they? You know, those are things that we're taking into account as well. Um, and as usual, I should say, um, these are all great choices. These are obviously all great front men. So on any given day, anyone could win. We're just going to see who happens to win tonight. Um, any of these could probably win this uh, this bracket, but uh, it, it, it you know it's a factor of who actually shows up to vote and uh, who's nominated to begin with. So um, we're just going to see who ends up winning on this particular stream. Uh, of course, we're only doing the first part, so if you want to see who the true winner is, you'll have to tune in to next week's to next week's stream as well. Okay, let me uh, I'm going to adjust my screen here. Whoops, let me see. How do I want to do this? I think I can... I want to get rid of this thing. Can I click? <laughs> uh, I just want this part. Like, I wish I could slide over. Um, I don't know. I'm not going to uh, fidget with that, so we'll just deal with it for now. At least you guys can clearly see the nominations there. So, All right, so let's see what we've got in the first bracket here. Um, again, we're just going to focus on one, two, three, four. We're going to focus on these first four segments. These, sec these next four, one, two, three, four, will be next week. So next week, if oh, man, look at that matchup. Chris Cornell versus James Hatfield. If you want to see that matchup, you got to tune in next week. Bruce Dickinson versus Dave Grohl. That's another pretty good one. Freddie Mercury versus Axl Roll, uh, Rose. And uh, Alice Cooper versus Jesse Leach. So if you want to see those matchups, you'll have to tune in next week. But for this week, we're going to focus on these first four brackets here. So we got Howard Jones versus John Foreman. We've got Dee Snyder versus Jared Way. We've got Kurt Cobain versus David Lee Roth. And Mick Jagger versus Chester Bennington. Now, we're going to check out some videos here. Let me get it set up where I'll be able to hear it. And let me make sure you guys... Uh, let me make sure you guys will be able to hear it too. Okay, y'all should be okay. So we do have some videos here that we're going to check out. Um, and we're going to look up some live videos. So if you made a nomination and you know like a good live video to check out... Um, you know, feel free to, to mention that when we get to your nomination. But um, otherwise, I'm, I'm just going to look up, you know, just the artist, look him up live, and, and, uh, and we'll see what we get. Catching up with the chat one more time before we kick things off. Um, yep, stay tuned next week. Uh, same, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, I guess. Uh, I don't know if I'm missing something there. I don't know if you're referring to me. As Batman, you know, <laughs> I'll take it. But all right, here we go. So uh, first one on the list, we got, uh, I think it was Howard Jones. Yeah, so we've got Howard Jones versus John Foreman. So um, here's a video of Howard. So Howard was the former vocalist. Not Well, he wasn't the first one. He was the second vocalist for Kill Switch Engage. And then the former vocalist came back to the band. That's Jesse Leach. But here's Howard. This was from a well, live DVD they Justin. put out. It's the end of heartache. Which, in general, Killswitch uh, is a great live band. Of course, I'm only saying that from the footage I've seen. I haven't had the pleasure of seeing them live. Like, what a nice voice. Getting the crowd involved. He's definitely got energy in his performance. Only thing I'll critique him for, and this isn't really his fault, but he's cupping the mic. Like, he's grabbing it like this. And that was something that a lot of metal bands did around that time. I don't know if they still do that. I think they've since been educated. But uh, <laughs> that's, that's the only criticism I'll give him. 
But in spite of that, he still sounds very good. That has to be such a cool feeling to have a crowd of people singing your lyrics back to you. I wonder if I'll ever get to experience that because that's got to be surreal. So we're not going to watch this whole thing, but I think you get the idea, you know. Great voice, you know, really engaging with the crowd. Um, I don't know, just awesome front man. You know, I, I, I love Howard Jones. He's, he's a favorite of mine, so... Um, funny little story I'll say. I, I talked about how I haven't had the chance to see Killswitch live. Um, I had one chance, and uh, unfortunately the timing uh, didn't work out. So Killswitch came to my town, uh, or my city, and uh, they were playing a show at one of the venues, and a friend had informed me, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so awesome. And I, I, was, uh, I, I bought tickets right away. I was looking forward to it. And I was talking to my brother-in-law about it. I was telling him, yeah, I'm so looking forward to the show. And he's like, that's cool, man. When is it? And I told him the date, and he's like, isn't our family going on vacation that week? And I was like, no, you got to be kidding. <laughs> and sure enough, like, our family was planned to go on vacation. And I was younger at the time, so um, I, I think I could drive, but I was definitely, you know, I was still, like, in my early, you know, like, sh this was, like, shortly after I'd graduated or something, so... Um, it was like right in the middle of our vacation. So there was no way I could like miss a couple days, see the show and then go on vacation. And, um, and I love my family. So yes, you know, I, uh, I love kill switch engage, but I, I wanted to go, I wanted to spend time with the family. It was just unfortunate timing. So I did not get to see the show. And I hoped that if they'd played here once that maybe they'd come around again. And unfortunately they haven't yet. So, <laughs> so I'm, uh, I'm hoping that maybe they'll make their way to, uh, to Charlottesville, Virginia at some point. We're going to check out Switchfoot uh, Live. Switchfoot, let's see if we can find uh, Meant to Live. That is a rocking song. So, Meant to Live Live. It's always a little weird when you have live and live and in the same sentence. So, Meant to Live, and then we're going to type that same lettering, but it's, uh, di you know, Meant to Live Live, you know. Meant to Live Live. But, uh, yeah, Howard is a favorite of mine. So, that's Howard. And then we're going to check out John Foreman of Switchfoot. Let's give this one a shot right here. And then I saved hundreds with Liberty Mutual. Again. Oh, let me get it where I'm going to be able to hear it. I saved hundreds it. with Liberty Mutual. Okay. Again. Yep. This uh, stream is not sponsored by Liberty Mutual. And... Um, I mean, I guess if they'd give me free insurance, I guess I'd be down for a sponsor. <laughs> now, this must be like an extended intro. For if anyone doesn't know, he is one of the guitarists. He's the guy with the blonde hair. Yeah, there he is. Fumbling is confidence and wondering why the world is passing by. Now, Silas, have you ever seen Switchfoot live? Because I haven't. But uh, I bet that'd be a good show. Yes, sir. So I think the band has good energy. And you can tell he's been rocking out because he's pretty sweaty looking. <laughs> Sounds good live. He's got a good voice. Now it is a little tricky when you're the front man and you're also playing guitar, the slight disadvantage you have is uh, that you're kind of locked to the mic placement, you know? You don't really get the chance, like other like vocalists uh, who aren't playing an instrument, you know, they can kind of move around the stage and stuff. Uh, when you're playing an instrument, whether you're sitting at a piano or at a mic, it, it's a little harder to, uh, 
you know, kind of express and, and, and showcase. But um, I don't think he's doing bad considering. Um, but I will say uh, that that's one thing that, that makes it a little harder for him to compete against someone like Howard who has the freedom to move around. And I will say just based off these performances, I do think, I don't know, Howard just, I think <laughs> there's just a lot of electricity coming from, from Howard. And uh, these guys, they're sounding good. They're playing good. And some of it could just be the the mix that we're hearing and stuff. But as far as stage presence, I think he's just performing well. I wouldn't say there's like anything particularly like, wow, that's that's electric. You know, there's something about his persona that, that that's drawing me in. So for me, um, my vote would have to go for Howard. But what do you guys think? Uh, between those two clips, would you go with Howard or John Foreman? Let me know what you guys think. Um, let's see here. Silas was saying, hey, have you heard the album Departures by John Foreman? I don't think I have. I'll take note of that, and I'll check it out. Uh, I'm going to write that down. John Foreman. Departures. I've heard some of his solo stuff. Uh, I think he did... I think he did, like, four EPs or something, and it was, like, spring, uh, summer, winter, and fall or something, and I think I had the fall one. Uh, and I remember liking a lot of the songs on that. It was like a, acoustic stuff, you know? It's really cool. Um, love this live video. Look at him. He's awesome. I'm singing along. <laughs> yeah. When I was very young, me and my parents did. Oh, so you have gotten to see him. Well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I bet that was a good show to go see. But yeah, I thought he gave a great vocal performance. And I think he's quite good. But if we're talking best front man, I think I, I, think I got to go with Howard Jones for this one. But yeah, Pukey's going Howard Jones as well. And I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Let me see something. Okay, cool, cool. Yep, so, uh, yeah, between Howard Jones and John Foreman. Um, Stanley, Jack, what do you guys think? Oh, hey, we got Daniel. Daniel, good evening. Stopping by for a bit on break right now. Well, Daniel, we are doing a bracket for Best Frontman. And I'm trying something a little different. Um, this is actually part one, so we're going to conclude this next week for part two. So what we're doing, if you look at the list here, um, we're doing the first uh, four brackets here. Uh, one, two, three, four. These four right here. And then next week, we'll do the next four. So we're going to do these first four through to completion. So there will be a winner tonight, but it's not the true winner. It's, it's the person who's going to take on the winner of next week. So next week, we'll go through this bracket and go through to the end, see who the winner of that is, and then we'll match those two up and see who the true victor of this bracket is. So we have a few nominees here, and uh, if you're hanging out for a bit, uh, I'll, I'll try to get a song in for you in a moment here, but I'll show you uh, the two clips we're looking at. We got Howard Jones versus John Foreman. Um, so just a quick little clip. Here's some of Howard. <laughs> And again, for Frontman, we're not just talking um, not just the voice, but their stage presence, you know, and, and just how entertaining they are. So Howard Jones, he was with Kill Switch Engage for a while. He's not the current vocalist, but he's probably one of my favorite vocalists. So there's a little bit of Howard, and then here's some of John Foreman of Switchfoot. Now, I will say, he was doing some good stuff there, the way he was holding his guitar up, but the camera zoomed all the way into his face. <laughs> so the cameraman's kind of ruining it. <laughs> like, he can't see his stage presence because you're zooming all the way in on his face. But again, that song, while those chords are holding out, that's kind of, as a guitarist and a singer, that's your opportunity to, like, you know, do something, you know, have a little bit of stage presence, a little bit of interaction. But I think sounds good live. I think, I think they're both great. For me, my, uh, my vote was for Howard. I think Pukey also voted for Howard. Um, but yeah, if you want to throw in a vote, feel free to do so. Um, let's see here. Jack is also going with Howard. So there's another vote there. Um, let's see here. Some hellos happening. 
And then, uh, yep, Daniel says, doing pretty good, just snacking on some food. What's on the menu for tonight, Daniel? Uh, what are you snacking on for your break? What he's singing about gets me. Um, yeah, I love that song, Meant to Live. Um, and I think it's a great, a great kind of kind of on topic with what we were talking about earlier. We were talking about uh, taking time to to do the things that that just bring you energy, that lift your spirits, that that recharge you, restore you, excite you. And it's easy to kind of get into the daily routine of life and just to um, just to to work yourself into a, a tired mess. And it's important to have those moments to just pull away, to unplug from everything going around, all the distractions, and just take some time to just do something, um, you know, more meaningful, more fulfilling. And I, th- I think it's important to aspire for those things. And so that's a great song with that message of we were meant to live uh, for more. Eating some sausage with cheese. Yeah, that sounds pretty yummy. Stan's going to go with uh, John Foreman. Um, so we'll go with that there. And Silas, I don't think you've actually cast a vote yet. I'm guessing you're going with John Foreman, but I, I could be wrong. You might you might go with Howard. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll um, yeah. Those are, that's the score right now. Right now, it's leaning towards towards Howard. Uh, we'll try to look at at one more here. Um, I think I think this might be a good. One. I'm actually going to skip this one because uh, I know Daniel's only staying by for a little bit. So I'm going to do one more little bracket, and then I'll play a song for you, Daniel, and then we'll get back to this. Um, let's have a look at Kurt Cobain versus David Lee Roth. And yeah, Silas says he's going to go with John. So things could change. Um, right now, Howard's still in the lead, but there is the possibility that uh, that John could make a comeback. Um, Let's have a look at Kurt Cobain and David Lee Roth. Now, I got to be honest, uh, Kurt Cobain again. He's one of those guys that uh, he's just a cool guy, you know, <laughs> like um, just really kind of easy going. And um, I don't know, he 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 doesn't try too hard to be cool, you know. He just is, and uh, I, I appreciate that about him. I actually want to look at two videos real quick. We're not going to look at all of them, but I was looking up one that was great. And then there was an, it reminded me of another one that I, I got to share with you guys. So this is kind of like a bonus video, but it's a, it's a really fun one. So this is Nirvana performing Smells Like Teen Spirit. And I think this one kind of has a, a bit of an instrumental. Oh, actually, hold on. This is good. So listen what they do here. Here we go. So he's playing the rhythm, but he's playing different chords. <laughs> so I like how they'll kind of like troll a little bit and they'll kind of just goof off like that. And then they go into the... Then they go into the real song. You know. So I think stuff like that, like stuff like that's kind of inspiring to me. Of just like them kind of goofing off and having a little bit of fun. Just being entertaining, which is very important, especially as a front man. And then here's the second thing that I really love. So you know this little guitar part, the... Dun- <laughs> I love how he messes it up and he just... He just rolls with it, you know, <laughs> like he messes up and he's like, whatever. And just, you know, hits even more bad notes. It's like, I don't know if I could do that. I feel like, you know, maybe I'll have to try that at some point. But I feel like if I mess up, I'm I'm too used to like trying to recover and, and, and get get back to the correct stuff. But he's just like, whatever. Yeah. He sounds good. Good vocal performance. I think he's like eating the mic at one point. Can't really see it because of the spotlight. Yeah. (laughs) 
So I appreciate that about him. You know, like he, uh, I don't know, just, yeah, just really easy going, like doesn't make a big deal and kind of has like that, uh, you know, like he's not a jerk, but he's kind of got that like almost rebellious attitude. Like if he messes up, he's just going to mess up even more on purpose, you know? So, um, he kind of just owns like what he does. So I, I think that's a good sign of, a uh, of a good front man. Let's see here. Stan sharing what's on the menu for him. Shrimp and smoked sausage. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Um, let's see here. Silas says, you like Nirvana, Daniel. I can play the solo from Teen Spirit on guitar. Nice. Uh, might put a smaller cover of the solo on YouTube. I think you should go for it. I think that'd be cool. And uh, if you do, let me know. I'll check it out. Just from the two clips, the first guy sounds good vocally, but he just holds the microphone. Um, uh John is moving and doing things engaging. It's just me. No, it's it, that's what this is about, you know. Um, I think that's that's a fair point. I was hoping to see Howard move around a little more in that clip as well. But to his credit, he's like up front with the audience. He's holding the mic out to the audience, getting them to sing along and, uh, you know, like really engaging. And that's kind of one advantage he has. Now, I do agree he could move around a little more. Um, and he did start off over by the drums, but, you know... Um, but uh, I, I think they both did a great job. Daniel says, I used to not like them back then, but I respect them much more now. Uh, same for Foo Fighters and Dave Grohl. He's a cool dude. And uh, I, I could kind of agree with that too. You know, like I'd heard Nirvana, they're obviously very well known. And, and I've sort of been like, yeah, I know Nirvana, you know, whatever. Just I never really thought much of them. But the more I kind of check them out, uh, there's actually a lot that I really appreciate about them. There's actually a lot I um, I really admire about um uh, Kurt Cobain. And so, uh, and yeah, you know, they were a great band. Uh, I'm not going to say they're like one of my favorites, um, but I get it, you know, <laughs> like I get why they were so big. And so, uh, yeah, they're a good one. And so we've got Kurt Cobain versus David Lee Roth. Um, let's see. And this was, a uh, David, I'm just going to look up David Lee Roth live. I know he was with Van Halen, but he wasn't always with Van Halen, right? Or was he the original vocalist or the, the later vocalist? David Lee Roth, live. Um, which I don't know if someone recommended a good uh, David Lee Roth live video. Yeah, not sure. Okay. Um, this is like a full concert. Trying to see if I can find... Let's give this one a shot. Just like Paradise. This might be a good one. You can see his hair... Uh, from rocking out, so this might be a good display. <laughs> Actually, I was looking up a few videos. Well, there you go. That's good stage presence. <laughs> if you have access to that. Are these just highlight clips from different shows? He's definitely uh, getting into it right there, but we go. Yeah, so the way his hair's moving, part of me's like, man, I need to get a fan. <laughs> you know? When I'm doing these streams, I need to get a fan just blowing my hair. So again, this is kind of an interesting matchup because we got Kurt Cobain, who's a little more like carefree, laid back, kind of like whatever. You know, and then we've got David Lee Roth, who's a little more theatrical, you know, kind of dressing a little more. Well, even Kurt, you know, who was wearing like a surgeon outfit or something, you know, some kind of like, uh, I don't know what you call that, but like that doctor's robe thing. But, you know, obviously we got some sparkle here and, you know, a little more theatrical and uh, very, just very, a lot of movement, you know. Like he's on a mountain, you know. <laughs> Not gonna lie, that's that's a tough that's a tough matchup um, because I definitely appreciate, like you know, if we're talking front men, uh, I think David Lee Roth is definitely you know owning the stage. Like he is putting out a lot of uh, um, a lot of energy into his performance and stuff. That's gonna be a tough one for me. I I can say. Like, I, I kind of like the easygoing, cool vibe a little bit, especially that, that Kurt has. But I, I appreciate, 
uh, the front men who who have that kind of confidence in their performance. So I'm going to have to think on that a little bit, but I don't know what you guys uh, are feeling between those two. Let's see here. Um, Daniel saying, while everyone was listening to Nirvana and grunge, when I was in school, I was all about thrash, uh, Metallica, Pantera, Megadeth, etc. Some punk too, Misfits, Sex Pistols, Ramones. Yep. Cool. Cool. That makes sense. Um, Daniel was, or sorry, Stan was saying, uh, that this is the original singer, uh, jump or running with the devil. Okay. Maybe that was a clip I should have checked out. But. Silas says, I like metal better than punk and grunge. Uh, and I, I mean, I like them all. I'd probably agree with that. Grun, I wouldn't say I'm a huge grunge fan. It's it's more like if I hear a grunge song that's good, I will probably like it. Um, I like most of Nirvana songs. They're probably my favorite grunge band, but I can't say there's a whole lot of other grunge bands that, that I really like. And then I do like punk, but sp- there's different kinds of punk. Um, I, I'm probably more of like the skater punk, pop punk kind of style. That's, that's what I really like. Um, but some of the kind of, you know, more old school punk is cool too. The Ramones was a super fun show. Um, did they have a show? <laughs> uh, which I don't know if the band had a show or if there was another show called The Ramones, but uh, very cool. That's the word, theatrical. Yep. Alice Cooper was a great front man. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, I, th- I think we have him on the list. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get to him tonight. Yeah, if you want to... Alice Cooper is on the list, but we're going we're gonna to get to him uh, next week. So, uh, so we'll see. So if you can, you'll have to tune in for that one. Um, we are paying for a show, baby. I like grit. Uh, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm really torn on this one. Uh, what are you guys thinking? Um, between Kurt Cobain and David Lee Roth. So again, uh, now I will say one thing just to keep in mind. I mean, this is a good showcase. But this is an edit of uh, multiple shows. But even just the little clips you see, you can see him, yeah, just owning the stage. If anything, this is a good resume. Showing off his kicks. Now, I will say, to be honest, he's not like the greatest singer, which is not what we're debating here, but I'm actually saying that as a testament to how good of a front man he is because he's got the charisma and the character in his voice that even though he's not the best singer, he's still a great front man, which I think speaks volumes. Man, I'm a little tough. If I'm being honest, I think I like Kurt Cobain better, but if we're going front man, I'm, I, might, I might have to vote. If I'm trying to be honest, I might have to go with David Lee Roth. <laughs> David Lee Roth. Now, I will say this. I think Kurt Cobain, I, I think if we're talking like songwriter, I think I'd give it to Kurt Cobain. I think he's probably a better songwriter. But if we're going, uh, if we're going front man, I, th- I think David Lee Roth. Um, wow. Uh, Pukey says, I saw them in, in concert. That's awesome. That's really cool that you got a chance to see them. Uh, let's see. Jack says, got to go David Lee Roth. Um, so we got one vote for David Lee Roth. And I have a feeling... I think I'm going to go too. It's it's kind of kind of hard for me. I kind of want to go with Kurt, but I might go with David as well. Daniel saying David. Um, Pukey saying David Lee Roth. Not my favorite, but he definitely was a showman. Um, and that that's kind of how I feel. I think he's definitely, you know, if we're talking front man, I, th- I think we got to give him credit where credit is due. Uh, so it's looking good for him. Um, Stan, Silas, if you all want to cast a vote and anyone else who hasn't voted, feel free to do so. But, uh, yeah, we got David. Yeah, Stanley says, I agree. David, uh, put butts in the seat. I mean, a lot of people do that. <laughs> but um, but he, uh, actually, you would think he would get them out of their seat um, by, uh, with the, uh, the performance. But, yeah, I have a feeling that's going to go to David Lee Roth. So, cool. Um, Daniel, if you got a little bit of time, I'm going to play a song for you. But I did want to share this little clip. Um, I thought this was hilarious, so I don't know if you've seen this, but there was a time where Nirvana had to play a show for a TV segment or something, and um, they were told that they had to lip sync. They, they couldn't play live. They had to play with the backing track and just lip sync and, and, and sync to the instruments, and they were against it. Um, they convinced them to let them have 
the mic live so that they could sing it, but they still had to play with a backing track. And what I love is that they totally just completely troll. They just uh, make it totally obvious that they are not really playing um, and, and that they are syncing with a backing track. And uh, um, the mic is live, though, so he sings it totally different than, than the way he did here. So uh, this is kind of another thing that I sort of appreciate and respect about Kurt, Cov uh, <laughs> Kurt Cavana, Kurt Cobain and Nirvana. But um, this is hilarious. So you hear the guitar riff, but watch his hands. <laughs> just like completely obvious that he's not really playing. He's not even fretting. He's just holding his fingers up. Bass guy's going crazy. And then his hands not even on the guitar. <laughs> well, it's... And then he sings. an octave lower <laughs> the drummer Dave Grohl he's uh yep, eating the mic drummer was like playing the beat on the cymbals <laughs> and then the chorus here he actually still sounds pretty good even though he's like joking So I appreciate that. Like how his hands are up. <laughs> He's totally playing guitar right now. And I like how the bassist, there's like no way you could play swinging your bass around that much. There's one funny spot where uh, there's a snare roll. Yeah, watch the drums. And watch his cymbal. Uh, he'll do the snare roll on the cymbal. <laughs> He's holding one hand up. And then right here, watch the cymbal. <laughs> Does the snare roll on the cymbal. Where's it at? And He's just putting his hands in there, his drumsticks in the air. I don't know, but I thought that was, uh, I thought that was so funny. That's like... That's something I would totally do if I was if I had a live band and I was forced to play with a backing track. I think it'd be fun just to to goof off with it and make it obvious that that you're not. But uh, yep, let's see here. Silas is gonna go Kurt. Well, I uh, appreciate you giving a vote for Kurt. I think he deserves one. Um, I probably could have gone with him too, and it looks like it'll still go David Lee Roth. But you know, in my heart, I'd go Kurt. But um, but I think trying to be uh, you know, honest with what we're voting for best front man. I think I got to go. Uh, Daniel says, oh, yes, I've seen this clip recently. Uh, Stanley says, uh, David is what broke them up. Um, his and Eddie Van Halen's egos. Yep. Still can't mess up trying to, I don't know if there was something else. Um, but uh, yeah, you do have to be careful, you know, and, and that's one thing, you know, uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Some of the best front men might have maybe too much of an ego about them. So that's part of the reason why they're uh, they're so good in front of a crowd because they just eat it up. You know that that's what they love. Um, but that can that can that might be good for a show. But then behind the scenes, that can be that can bring up issues with um, uh, yeah band members or or just things going on behind the scene and that kind of kind of stuff. So always good to have some humility. Um, all right, Daniel, if, uh, if you're hanging out, I'm going to play a song for you real quick, and then we'll resume our bracket. Uh, let me get the screen fixed. Here we go. All right, so this one, just a reminder, guys. Um, you know, whenever you're going through a tough time, don't ever give up. Just keep trying. Um, always keep persevering. It is completely normal to fail. In fact, I would argue that you never truly fail unless you actually give up. Uh, 
one of the uh, teenagers in the youth group that I help with, he just started getting into skateboarding. Some of you guys might know that I like skateboarding. And so the other night he brought his board and I was kind of showing him a few basic tricks and he was self-conscious about you know, falling off the board. He was kind of riding on it and then he'd, well, he'd lose his balance and he'd run off, but he never actually fell down. He always l- was on his feet. You know, he always caught himself, but he was embarrassed by that. And me, I was thinking like, dude, <laughs> nothing to be embarrassed about. That's normal. That is like, if you want to get good at skateboarding, you better get used to falling because half of skateboarding is falling. And The more you fall, the more you learn how to fall. You learn how to fall gracefully. You learn how to catch yourself. And most importantly, you learn how to get back up and try again. And so, you know, there's nothing to be embarrassed about if uh, if you mess up, if you find yourself in a a low spot. Nothing to be embarrassed about. Nothing to think like, oh, man, I... You know, I ruined this. I messed this up. There's, I don't know how I'm going to come back from this. You know, just get back up. Try again. Don't give up. And that's what this song is about. So this one's called Get Up Again. Again, that one was called Get Up Again. 
and I have released that song. So if you enjoyed it and would like to hear it again, I will post the link in the chat so that you can do so. Uh, let me grab the link real quick, and here we go. There we go. So yeah, if you enjoyed the song and would like to hear it again, there's a link. Uh, you can find it on Spotify or wherever you like to listen to music. So, um, For anyone just tuning in, don't be shy. Say hello. We are doing a bracket. This is part one of our bracket for best frontman. So um, we've got a couple winners. Technically, these could turn around if more people show up and cast some votes. But right now, we had Howard Jones versus John Foreman, and it uh, looks like the win is going to Howard Jones. And then we've got Kurt Cobain versus David Lee Roth, and it uh, looks like the win is going to David Lee Roth. Let me catch up with the chat, and then we will continue with the voting and the discussion. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Stan was saying uh, Eddie wanted all the attention for his guitar playing and David was getting all the attention as lead singer. Jealousy set in and poof, they split. Um, yep, sounds like that is the right recipe for that kind of thing to happen. So <laughs> thank you for the uh, the applause and the fire. Thanks for the emojis, uh, Jack, Pukey, and, and thank you, Daniel. Good job, Quincy. Hey, thanks. Appreciate that. All right, so uh, we got a couple more here. Um Next up, we've got D. Snyder versus Gerard Way. Now, I'm going to go ahead and start with Gerard Way just because I've got a video. So this is uh, the lead vocalist for My Chemical Romance. Now, I'll be honest. Um, I think he does a great job in music videos. Uh, I think he does okay. I've, I've seen a few live clips of My Chemical Romance, and to be honest, he doesn't always sing that well <laughs> in, uh, in, in his live performances. He's a great vocalist, but it's unfortunate, like... You know, you know he can sing good, but whenever he performs live, it's just a lot of the clips I've seen, he, he usually sounds like he's struggling a little bit. At Metro, get a new iPhone 12. Sorry, I gotta get through these ads real quick. Um, but he definitely has some charisma to him, so I think he's uh, I think he's a worthy contender. And MCR is pretty big, so only at Metro. Um, I think they're worth checking out. I mean, that's a lot of. A lot of little lights there. <laughs> a lot of phones. A lot of people in that audience. When I was the album, my father took me into the city. So especially with this album, the Black Parade, they definitely went more, they went all out. Like very theatrical, you know, they're, they're dressed in the uh, kind of emo marching band outfit so he's doing a good job like engaging with the audience he sounds good and again a little bit of theatrical um, you know expressions This is the intro. I want to wait till this actually kicks in. Yeah, I mean, you know, I kind of grew up. I never really went through like, I, I never had the confidence to uh, to dress like all emo. But I grew up when the emo scene was big, and I had a few emo friends, and uh, Gerard was definitely like the uh you know the leader of the emo scene <laughs> you know and you can see why you know like he he kind of you could see why teenagers would connect with someone like that like it just seems like someone who gets them you know you feel like the outcast you feel like you're not like everyone else and this is someone who kind of has the the confidence to own that so yeah, so I think that's a good clip of him, but he's going up against D. Snyder, and uh, so let me look up D. Snyder live. And uh, I know one of you mentioned the uh, uh, maybe that's how you spell it actually, D. Snyder live. Um, unless is there? Uh, I think you mentioned a certain band. Oh, Twisted Sister. 
Yeah, we're not. This might be a good one. Hopefully, this is a live clip. Yeah, let's check this one out. We're not going to take it. Actually, on the filthy fifteen. All right. Now, this is an older one. I don't know if we want to look up a, a younger one or if he's still got it, but I guess we'll find out in a moment here. Daniel says, got to head back to work. May stop by next week, but uh, I'll be out of the country, so we'll see. Um, which, speaking of which, I forgot to talk to you about uh, the eclipse and stuff. I know you posted a video, unless I mentioned that last week. I can't remember, but I know Daniel posted a video about that, so glad that worked out for you. And yeah, that's that's cool. You'll have to inform me. Let me know where you're going, and uh, I hope you have a good trip. Hope you have safe travels. Hope the rest of your work shift goes well, uh, but thanks for stopping by to say hello. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, let's give this uh, this clip a shot. How many drummers do you know that have a Let's see here. So yeah, this is just from like a year ago. Now to his credit, like he's an older dude and he's still putting his heart into it. Like he's rocking. <laughs> and, and he's not rocking in a rocking chair, you know, he's rocking on stage. I think that's a pretty good clip. I'm going to find one of him more so in his prime. I just want this to be a fair comparison. But, you know, to his credit, being that old, that old and, and still moving like that, still having that much energy, um, like, I hope I'm like that, you know, when I'm his age. So, um, yeah, so, so way to go. I'm going to check out this clip here. Amazon's delivery service partner Wait, this, program this isn't... <laughs> man, I keep finding these newer clips. I was trying to find one from, like, you know... Yeah, like the Prime. Um, yeah, this is saying 2016. He actually looks pretty good there. <laughs> um, let's see. Man, I'm seeing all these ones from 2016. This might be an older one here. They aren't dressed up. Yeah, like that, I guess you mean. <laughs> now, I will say this. Um, costumes are kind of interesting. Again, I mean, that's the great thing about art is that there's, there's more than one way to do it. It's not like there's only one way or there's a right or wrong way. It's just whatever you want to do. And I think it's just... I think it just depends on what best expresses you as a person. And for me, I really like being genuine and authentic. And so I'm not the kind of person where I would dress up all that much just because, uh, you know, like, like costumes and stuff, because to me that feels a little, well, inauthentic. Um, now, to some people, I think they have that energy and they enjoy... Uh, they enjoy that. They enjoy the costume kind of thing. But there are sort of bands, and there's kind of a give and take. I think in some cases, I'm not saying in, in the way they do it, but in some cases it, it can be a little bit of a gimmick where you can take a band that's kind of mediocre, but if they're willing to dress up and sort of create this, uh, um, you know, this entertaining looking image then they can sort of surpass like even though they're not really that great of a band they can sort of elevate themselves by be by willing to do that now I'm not saying that's the case here but um but i do think that's true that that sometimes costumes and, and such can be something to hide behind but sometimes i don't think that's the case sometimes i think there's a really cool vision um and express with that or i think it it kind of goes with the brand or the uh the overall image you know that's the cool thing about music is it's not always just the music. Sometimes it's the whole package. Sometimes it's your uh, like your album covers and the way you're dressed. And there's like almost a whole package of of art combined to create this one thing. Um, you can kind of see that here. So when uh, My Chemical Romance put out the Black Parade album, they went all out with the whole marching band theme. And they but they did like the emo version of it. You know, lots of blacks and uh, black and white and um, 
you know, a lot of makeup and the, and they 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 went with that, but it was kind of intentional, you know, in in expressing the whole theme of that album rather than just uh oh, you know, we're we're just dressing this way. You know, they don't always dress that way. It was just for promoting that particular album. Um but uh but yeah, but again, at the end of the day, it is about entertaining the audience and uh definitely dressing up and doing such uh helps do that. Let's see here. Oh, hey, we got Dom tuning in. Hey, Dom, hope you're doing well. Uh, got some hellos happening. Uh, they were 80s. Yep, yep. This song was about rebelling against the straight-laced preppy boomer lifestyle. Um, that probably makes sense. You know, <laughs> we're not going to take it. You know, just kind of wanting to. Uh, uh, yeah, everything was acceptable in the 80s. Yeah, uh, the 80s. Yeah, a lot of a um, lot less restrictions on things. You know, a lot less. People were uh, seemingly a little more easygoing and a little more experimental and, uh, yeah, not, not so easily offended and stuff. Um, Dom, if you're just tuning in, yep, we're getting a bracket going. Right now we're doing uh, D. Snyder of Twisted Sister versus Gerard Way of Chemical Ro- uh, My Chemical Romance. Now, we're not just talking about their singing ability, but their frontman ability, you know, how much they, they – own the stage, how much how much they perform, and and um, but but it's still a fact uh, a matter of both, and there's going to be different styles. So, um, you know, and I say that to say, you know, just because someone just because someone has the energy to run all over the stage doesn't automatically mean oh he's a good front man. It's like no, they gotta they gotta be the leader of the band. They can't just be uh, the most energetic. You know, just like who is who is best serving the band and the audience. That's kind of what we're looking for. So this is. Uh, D. Snyder. And yeah, good energy. A lot of hair to swing around. Very enthusiastic. And this is kind of a good matchup because they're both very theatrical. So that's uh, D. Snyder. And then here is um, Gerard Way. Yeah, so I think they're both really good if um, if I'm coming through okay. And I'll kind of, I'll repeat what I was just saying, but um, yeah, one more time. Hopefully I'm coming through. It says excellent connection, but I think I was disconnected for a moment. So just let me know if you can see me, give me a thumbs up. Um, but yeah, I was just expressing uh, anybody else buffering. Yeah, so I'm, I'm seeing that. Can you see me? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm in the chat. So uh, I got a notification that I had disconnected for a moment, but I should be reconnected now. So uh, just let me know. Again, give me a thumbs up if you guys can see me and hear me. Um, Stan says, sorry, got to go. Love y'all. Remember David Lee Roth. Um, well, I appreciate you tuning in, Stan, and I will see you tomorrow, I'm sure. Uh, and I hope Logan's feeling better. I hope he feels good. Pukey uh, says, I can see you now. Thumbs up. Yep. Um, I might have for a second. Okay. Cool, cool. So, oh, hey, we got Chad. Chad in the chat. Chad, appreciate you tuning in. And uh, hey, no worries. No worries with being late. Um, just to get you up to speed. So we're, uh, yep. Uh, that's another vote for, for Gerard. Um, we're trying a two-part thing. I had actually talked to you about this a little bit, but we're going to try... Uh, doing a two-part. We've already got all our nominees, but we're only doing the first half for tonight's stream, and we'll do this all the way through to see who who wins the first half, and then uh, next week we will do the next uh, half of the bracket, and the winner of that will take on the winner of tonight's bracket to see who the ultimate victor is. So uh, right now, yeah, we were doing D. Snyder of Twisted Sister versus Gerard Way. We had a couple clips. This is uh, Gerard Way in... Uh, doing the the black parade and yeah you know he was just he was the leader of the scene scene you know the emo scene so he he was one to look up to for sure 
And to be honest, you know, again, it, it, it might be the same way with uh, Twisted Sister and Dee Snyder. That might be how people in the 80s felt. That's kind of what Jack seemed to be implying, that this particular song was kind of like, you know, the, the people who just didn't quite connect with the norm. And uh, this was kind of a bit of an anthem for, uh, yeah, just kind of like, hey, you know, let's embrace the weirdness or our differences, you know, let's, let's not just conform and be just like everyone else. Let's, let's do that. And that's kind of what they're both doing. You know, I feel like in that same way, that's sort of what my chemical romance kind of was for, for the emo kids. And, um, and, you know, just the, the kids who didn't feel like they, they fit in with, uh, um, what was, what was kind of normal and what was, uh, kind of just what everyone, what everyone else was doing, but some hellos happening. Yeah, Chad says David Lee Roth beat Kurt. Oh my! Yeah, that was an interesting matchup um, because uh, what we are discussing here, it, it, we are discussing frontman, and so it is more than just singing. It is, um, uh, what do you call it? It's uh, you know stage presence and how they engage the stage, how how entertaining they are, and uh, that was a tough one for me. Um, I think musically. And even vibe-wise, uh, I personally like Kurt better, but I do think David Lee, I think he has a lot of energy and charisma in his performance. And so I think if we're talking purely just being a front man, I think David Lee Roth was a good way to go. Uh, but that was kind of surprising for me as well. Um, but I did, um, uh, I, I could have gone either way. I, I ended up voting for David uh, for the front man, but but I probably, but yeah, that was kind of surprising me too. Uh, in my heart, I kind of wanted it to be Kurt, but, um, but yeah, uh, yeah, so far we've got, and, and just so you know, I mean, you're certainly welcome to still vote on these other ones. Nothing is set in stone just yet. Um, I don't know if it'll change things, but we did have Howard Jones, formerly of Kill Switch Engage, and John Foreman of Switchfoot. Right now it's going to Howard Jones, but, and then we had, uh, uh, Kurt Cobain and David Lee Roth, um, and you could vote for that, but again, it does look like it's probably going to be David Lee Roth. And then right now, we're discussing D. Snyder and Gerard Way. Um, but yeah, let me see. Were there any other votes for that? Um, I went with Gerard. I think I think both Jack and Dom went with D. So yeah, let me get yeah two votes for that. And then I know Chad said... Um, Gerard, so I think it's two and two, so we're tied right now. So you ha if you haven't voted yet, go ahead and mention um, whether it's going to be D. Snyder or Gerard Way. Uh, let's see here. Catching up. Pukey says this is tough. It's not just about vocals, but the whole frontman persona. Chad, yeah, that's kind of what makes it hard. Um, I don't really like David Lee Roth. LOL. <laughs> yeah. And that, that's kind of what, that might make it hard too. You know, um, I, even me, like, I, I don't know much about, uh, about David Lee Roth, um, based on the clips, you know, he was clearly a front man. Like he, he had a lot of charisma. He really owned the stage. And so I, th I think he was a fair one to go with, but you know, if I was picking my personal favorite, I think I'd, I'd go Kurt, but, uh, yeah, you know, we are trying to judge not just on singing ability, but overall frontman, you know, serving the band and serving the audience, being entertaining on stage and that kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, he was. Um, and yeah, that's a good point too. Uh, Chad saying Kurt didn't want to be a frontman. One thing I was sort of sharing that I actually really admire about Kurt, I, I love how like laid back he is and how easygoing. And um, a few clips that we showed, uh, they were both from smells like teen spirit but you know when he messes up on the guitar part the little down here you know the two notes he uh when he messes up he just owns it and just hits even more wrong notes you know he wasn't like trying to cover up he's just like whatever and just went with it you know and so i kind of like that carefree attitude that he had um and then there's another clip uh chad let me know if you've seen this because it's hilarious but nirvana had to play with a backing track like they were forced to lip sync um, they allowed Kurt to still have a live mic, but the band was just having, they were told to pretend to play and they make it so obvious that, that they're, you know, that they're playing with a backing track. You know, he's like totally not in sync. He's not even fretting chords on his guitar. The bassist is just swinging the instrument all around. And, um, 
the drummer is doing snare rolls on the cymbal. Um, you can just tell they're like just having fun trolling and, and just goofing off. And uh, and even the way he sings it, he sings like an octave lower. And uh, yeah, it was just, I don't know. It was funny. So that's a good clip. If you haven't seen it, you'll have to check that one out. Uh, Pukey says going to go with Gerard. And Silas is also going with Gerard. So that's a couple more there. That might solidify him. Uh, let's have a look at this next one, and then I'll dive into a song for you guys. Whew, we got uh, Mick Jagger versus Chester Bennington. Now, I'll be honest right off the bat. I, uh, I love Chester, so I've, I've kind of I've, I've got a little bias, but I'm going to give Mick Jagger a chance here, and we'll, uh, we'll check out a clip. Let's start. I've already got one up for Chester. Yeah, here we go. So um, this was a, a live performance from Linkin Park. And uh, Chester was one of those guys, just super passionate. Like, you know, he just sang his heart out. And I, I really appreciate that, you know. Again, because to be fair, like, I, I'm not taken away from... I'm not taken away from anyone who's very charismatic and entertaining on stage. Oh, I'm trying to pause this. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to take away from anyone who who has that charisma to them. Like, that. that's great. Um, but... Again, they can be a gimmick sometimes, like just to run around and just, you know, just because you're crazy on stage doesn't necessarily mean you're putting a good performance. So I personally believe the best is like a good balance where you're entertaining, but you're also performing well and you're not just hiding behind pure uh, entertainment. In fact, sometimes it's kind of frustrating where someone is like totally putting on a show, but when you stop and just listen, it's like, this doesn't even sound that good, you know? <laughs> but uh, Chester's someone that just felt like like he just means every word he's singing you know and I like how he's like engaging with the audience like looking at people But yeah, so there's a little bit of Chester right there. And what I really like, I feel like he, I mean, think about it. Think about it if you're in the audience and the lead singer of your favorite band is just like right up, just like pointing to you while he's singing. Like, you know how much that has to mean? Like, I know it might not look like he's like jumping all over the stage, but um, it kind of reminds me. I, I actually saw this. I looked up a live clip of uh, Katy Perry. And, um, you know, that she's a front woman. So that's another, you know, that'll be another bracket later. And she's more in pop anyway. You know, we're trying to focus more on rock and metal. But she did this thing where, like, she was singing a line. And then she said, uh, I can't remember what the line was. I think it was for, um, what was it? Falling from cloud nine, that song. But it was a certain lyric about, like, getting back up again. And then, um, or, and uh, she kind of, like, I can't remember how she said it, but she pointed to someone. She's like, you know, you can do that. And I just, I love that little moment of just connecting with the audience and taking a moment to speak the lyric rather than just singing it, but make a comment on it and like showing encouragement, you know? And, and uh, that's kind of what I see in this is, uh, you know, he's not just rocking out on stage and completely neglecting the audience. He's like getting up as close as he can and, and, and looking at them and, and interacting. So I really appreciate that. But uh, but I, I am concerned, <laughs> you know, this this could be a similar situation to like Kurt Cobain where, um, uh, you know, may, maybe he's just a little too easygoing. And if we're talking front man and just, you know, really owning the stage, I'm not sure how Mick Jagger performs, but uh, we're about to find out. So Mick Jagger live. Um, might need to look up Rolling Stones live. But let's see. Uh, let's see. Interesting. Now, Chad's going Mick here. Um, let's see here. Let's give this one. Can't get no satisfaction. Feeling healthy by leaps and bounds. Making a dinner that makes their whole day. This is not sponsored by uh, 
Hills. I don't even know what brand this is. Um, Hills Pets Nutrition. No. And I don't have a pet, so I can't say that would be the most appropriate um, sponsor for me. All right, so here's a clip of Rolling Stones Live. This was from uh, 1981. Skip ahead. I think that's him coming out. Yep. So good, good entrance. Of course, the camera cuts away. Yep. So yeah, so definitely like owning the stage. Definitely some. That had to be fun with all the, the balloons dropping. So yeah, kind of like some of the other ones we're seeing here. <laughs> I don't know what the context of that was. I'm guessing that was rehearsed. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. <laughs> But uh, yeah, kind of like some of the other performances we've seen where he definitely has some theatrics about him and uh, definitely has like a confidence that makes for a good front man. I don't know that this is his best vocal performance, but, but you know, he sounds good enough. And especially in a live setting sometimes, like with all that energy, it's like you can kind of get by with a... Um, you know, with a decent performance. I'll look up uh, one more, if I can find it. This might be a more recent one. Well, yeah, not from too long ago. Let's check this one out. I like this song, the uh, Painted Black. Jagger is huge energy. Yeah, definitely from the little clip, you can see he definitely has a lot of energy about him, um, which is good for a front man. And again, I might kind of have to go... This That's kind of why I feel like this might be the same thing as before, where I... Personally, probably connect with, with Chester more. But if we're talking front, man, it might be someone more like Mick Jagger. Someone who's got a little more uh, a little more charisma and a little more uh, theatrics. Side note, first time I heard this song was from the game uh, Twisted Metal Black. Anyone ever play the Twisted Metal games? Those were awesome. <laughs> I like how it gets the, the crowd clapping. And again, confidence and just... You know, just good stage presence. You know, he's not just standing there. Here we got him. Yeah, so, you know, I can see. And, uh... I don't know. Definitely a lot of, lot of charisma, a lot of energy. This is going to be another tough one for me. Um, but what do you guys think? So I think Chad's going Mick, and it looks like Silas is going to go Mick as well. And uh, yeah, if anyone else, whoever else is out there, if uh, if you want to cast a vote, yeah, we're looking at Mick Jagger and uh, looking at Chester over here. That's a big stage because <laughs> he was on that platform earlier and now he's...
Sorry, I kind of got caught up. <laughs> I was like, just wanted to keep watching. Yep. All right, Pukey's going Mick as well. Um, I think I could probably agree with y'all. I'm going to give one to Chester, kind of out of sympathy. <laughs> but uh, but I think I'd have to agree that that I think if we're talking front man, I think we got to go Mick. But um, awesome. All right, well, guys, I'm going to perform a song. And then what we're going to do, so we've already got the first half. So we'll do this next half and then the uh, final to announce the winner for tonight. So we'll get into that. Oh, we pretty good. Pretty good matchup because we got David Lee Roth versus Mick Jagger, which are both very, uh, you know, very theatrical type characters. So that's a good matchup. And then we got Howard Jones versus Gerard Way. That's a pretty good matchup, too, because we kind of got the, you know, metalcore versus emo kind of stuff. But let me go ahead and dive into a song here for you guys. And uh, and then we will continue with the uh, with the voting. Um, let me see what we got next on the list here. Um, all right. So I'm going to play another song for you. And uh, let me just take this moment just to say I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in and hanging out. And if you do enjoy these streams, you enjoy the songs, you enjoy the uh, just hanging out and doing uh, brackets like this, game night stuff, um, I'm just going to give a quick little shout out for my um, virtual tip jar if you'd like to support me. Um, there is a link right there. And uh, I certainly appreciate anything that you're willing to provide to uh, support me and helping me uh, continue to do this. And if you're not already signed up for my email list, I'm going to post a link for that as well. And this is an opportunity for me to notify you directly for whenever I have a new song released, whenever, uh, whenever I'm doing these live streams, and just keeping you posted with, uh, with everything that I've got going on. And so, um, yeah, if you want to stay informed for whenever I have a new song coming out, which I do have a new song coming out at the end of this month um, on the 29th. That's going to be the release for Brothers to the End. So if you want to be informed when that is up and available, uh, be sure to sign up for that list. And uh, whenever I do these live streams, you know, you can be notified of that as well. All right. Hope you like this one. This one's called Erase Myself. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
evening Without the refiner It's time to change What used to define me Resist the pain I have to keep fighting Ignite the flame It's deep down inside me It hurts at first But worth all the pain To see myself And not be ashamed It hurts at first But worth all the pain I'll praise myself for all this pain Erase myself and start again And I'll face myself with honesty Erase myself and start again Thank you. Again, that one was called Erase Myself. And if you enjoyed that song, I have released it. So you can find it on Spotify or wherever you like to listen to music. And uh, I'll go ahead and grab a link and post it in the chat. So if you'd like to hear that song again, uh, you will be able to do so. So here we go. Here is a link for that. There you go. All right. Thank you. Silas says, great job. Appreciate that, Silas. Thank you. Um, yeah, for anyone just tuning in, don't be shy. Say hello. And we're getting to a uh, kind of getting to the finish here of our bracket. We're doing um, just the first half today. We have 16 total nominees, um, but we're just doing the first eight today. And so we've already made it through um, the first bit. And so we've got just a little more to go. We went through all these, and uh, we've got the, uh, the, the winners of this first round who have advanced, and we're going to go through and see who the winner of tonight is. And, uh, and then I've got one more song for you guys. But, uh, yeah, let's continue with this. So let's see here. We've got Howard Jones versus Gerard Way. So Howard Jones was formerly the, uh, the lead vocalist of um, Kill Switch Engage. So I've got a clip of... Howard performing here and um this PGA season get more out of actually I'll tell you what you know let's check out Gerard first and uh well yeah we'll go with this so I already got a few clips here so we'll, we'll check these out let's not over complicate things all right yep so here's Howard Jones this the end of and some of us, we kind of saw some of this before. But I like how he... He hypes up the crowd, and then he... Prompts them to sing. So I do like that crowd interaction. Let's skip ahead a little bit, because we watched some of this earlier. So again, I do like that he uh, very good at engaging with the crowd. 
I will say, I would think he would move around a little more. He is kind of a little stationary, and he doesn't have to be because he's got a handheld mic, you know. There we go, he's moving. Anyway, Howard is a favorite of mine, great vocalist. But this is going to be a tough matchup because um, I can already say, you know, uh, again, Gerard just has a lot of that charisma about him. And uh, again, he was kind of at the forefront of the, uh, the emo scene. Uh, hey, thank you for the uh, applause, Pukey. I appreciate that. So uh, here is... There we go. Yeah, clip of Gerard. Again, getting the uh, the audience to sing. dressed up for the show because again during this time they were kind of doing the album was the black parade you know. I'm gonna skip ahead a, a little bit on this too just because we watched some of this earlier just kind of want to see what else there is Definitely a lot of energy in this performance. Yeah, I think they're both great, to be honest. Um, like, if I had to pick a vocalist, I think I'd go... They're both great, but I think I'd go Howard. I think Howard Jones is just, like, one of the best vocalists ever, especially in metal. But if we're talking front man, I think I gotta go Gerard Way. I think Gerard Way is just uh, super... Um, I don't know, just very charismatic and uh, definitely a good front man. Definitely... A, a good, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, you almost, sometimes in, in bands, you do have that that one person that is almost kind of the, I'm trying to think of a better word than front man, but you know, that they are the, they are the image of the band, you know what I mean? And I feel like Gerard is definitely that for My Chemical Romance. He's kind of the image of My Chemical Romance. Uh, Pukey says, my phone is driving me nuts, keeps lagging. That's frustrating. Yeah, sorry sorry you're having difficulties. I appreciate you sticking it out. I hope hope you're still able to enjoy the stream in spite of uh, some lag on your end. Yeah, Pukey says, going to go with Gerard, <clears throat> and I think I'm going to go with that too. Chad, Silas, if you're still out there, what about you guys? What, Who are y'all going with? And, uh, you know... Uh, if you have any other thoughts that you'd like to share about that matter, uh, please let me know. So that's one. Um, we can You can still vote on that. But then the other one we have is David Lee Roth and Mick Jagger. So let's, uh, yeah, let me look up David Lee Roth real quick. Um, David. Yeah, we had a few uh, clips here. But let me see if I can find one for him. And uh, this is going to be an interesting matchup because, again, we're, we're definitely getting into, like, the very charismatic, very enthusiastic, uh, very theatrical kind of performers. Um, that might be a good one to check out there. I don't know if this is him with... Well, oh, no, that, that one's really long. Let's see if we can find the one we had watched... Yeah, we these live re-edits kind of almost like a compilation. Like they kind of show like a bunch. Um, I don't know. We might just go with that for now. I was trying to find like a full-on performance. Uh, we'll check this one out. So I think this one. I mean, it does showcase him, but I feel like it's a little, little deceptive just because this is clips from several shows. You know, this isn't just one performance. So it's kind of showing like kind of a reel of 
probably his most dramatic moments. Now, I could be wrong. That's how the other video was. This is a different one. Now, I'm actually not going to give him any points for his entrance, <laughs> you know, coming in on a stage ring. Obviously, that's great, good showmanship, but that's more so like the, uh, the event itself. It's not really him. Again, you could put anyone in that situation. Now, he's clearly owning it. Again, a lot of confidence. And I mentioned this earlier. You know, David Lee Roth, he's kind of one of those singers where he almost kind of shouts more than he sings. Um, but I think his, uh, his charisma, his, his stage presence, he's kind of able to get by with that. Like, even though his vocals aren't, like, alone aren't fantastic, I think as the whole package, as a front man, very charismatic, and with, like, passable vocals, I, th I, think, it, I think his showmanship elevates him. Yeah. So I do appreciate the kicks. As someone who practices martial arts, I appreciate him throwing some kicks out there. Um, maybe I'll have to start throwing a few kicks uh, in my performances. Uh, but let's pair him up. Let's uh, have a look at uh, Mick Jagger. We'll, we'll check out another Mick Jagger clip. This is a uh, Painted Black from earlier. Check out one more. I'm gonna look up the Rolling Stones live. Last time I just looked up Mick Jagger. Um, this might be a good one. Live at Max 1991. If this, nope, but <laughs> trying to avoid the hour long videos, you know, I'm just trying to find like a clip of one song. Uh, this might be a good one. I don't know if this is the same one we watched earlier. I know we watched one from that song. Um, Trying to pick a good one. Yeah, well, uh, hmm, we'll go with, uh, we'll give this one a shot. Bulova introduces the new lunar pilot timepiece, born in the core of asteroids. Silas, no two dials oops, sorry, I'm getting some delay here. The one lunar second. pilot chronograph continues the legacy Check one, two. of precision okay, should be fine. and timing. Bulova. Bold at heart. This stream is not sponsored by Bulova, but um, I mean, I guess I'd take one. To be honest, I've never really understood the reason for watches. <laughs> you know, I mean, if they're, I don't know, it, it, it's never been my thing. But if you're a watch person, let me know. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, we did have a couple votes for Gerard, which I think. Well, we have one more. Yeah, Silas is going with Gerard. Silas says he's done martial arts. Any particular style, or was it just a mixed style? Um, that's cool, man. By the way, that was uh, really nice to see your response to my comment on one of your first videos ever. Well, I appreciate you checking it out. Yeah. Uh, it definitely was an older video. It was one I posted years ago. I think he sounds better here than he did in the other clip we were checking out. He does a good job with his hand gestures, you know? Like, they seem intentional. He's not just winging his arms around. He's pointing at people, he's making motions that kind of match with like what he's singing. Again, I kind of like, like some attitude there that just, I, I kind of appreciate that. Like I feel like his performance is with more intention. You know, he's not just flailing about, but he's, uh, It's like he's really thinking about what he's singing and he's really expressing what he's saying through his, his body language. 
skip ahead a little bit. Yeah, not gonna lie, that's gonna be a tough one between these two for me, because uh, I'm trying to trying to really think who's the better front man, and um, some of the clips again, I I'm trying to judge like basically just them with the mic. Like obviously in the other clip, I mean he's being lowered in a wrestling ring, um, but that shouldn't count as his, you know, <laughs> as part of his performance. Um, and so I, in, I'm kind of leaning towards Mick Jagger, but I'm trying to be honest. You know, I'm trying to think like, is he really, you know, based off of their performances, how they're engaging with the crowd and, and singing the song, um, do I think he's the better front man than David Lee Roth? I'm not really sure. What do you guys have thoughts on? Silas was saying uh, he did some karate. Very cool. Um, <clears throat> I never practiced much actual karate. I started with Kung Fu, actually, just watching YouTube videos. I, I never, like, signed up for classes or anything. Um, but I started with Kung Fu, and then uh, I watched this this uh, TV show series. It was uh, called Fight Quest. It was two martial artists who would travel around the world, and they would practice a style of, of a certain martial art. They would practice for a week. One would practice the traditional way. One would practice like a modern contemporary way in a certain style. And then at the end of the week, they would have a sparring match with uh, a student of the the, uh, the dojo they were training in. And what was really cool about that show was that you could see the art put in action. Uh, you could see... And, and basically, you could see how, how effective the, the martial art actually is in a real fight. Because sometimes there's some martial arts that they look cool... But then you try to use it in a real fight, and it just does not work. And so after watching that, that educated me, and that introduced me to um, uh, Muay Thai, which is probably my favorite, and uh, Krav Maga, which is kind of another favorite of mine. Um, and then with mixed martial arts, just conceptually, I like that, that idea of taking the best parts of several different martial arts and combining them into one style. So I would say that's mainly what I kind of do. Um, yeah, Pukey says, I think song tempo affects performance also. I would agree with that. Um, we did have kind of a more high energy song here. And if I knew their songs better, I could pick one. Uh, and I would say, you know, for a slower song, like he's definitely still owning it, even though it's kind of a, kind of a more chill song. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe I can find like one more clip. Uh, if there's something a little more. This one's a little more upbeat, I think, this song. And I don't know if anyone knows any uh, slower Van Halen songs. <laughs> but yeah, we'll check out these couple clips here. But we probably will try to get through this pretty quickly. So we can, uh, again, we don't, don't want to linger too long. Well, you know what? People customize and save hundreds on car Yeah. Well, we'll check out this clip and then we'll we'll get moving. Silas says, "I took lessons at a Christian studio in San Diego." Cool. How long did you take karate for, and do you still practice today, or was that just something that you did once and uh, don't really practice much anymore? And here we go. It was just the one. I think this is a different performance. But we saw the song earlier. I do appreciate that, you know. It's like really getting into the music, really getting the crowd hyped up. This was from about 10 years ago, 2013. <laughs> cool, cool. So I think it could go either way. Um, 
I think I'm going to go with Mick Jagger. That's kind of the one I'm favoring more. But uh, what do you guys think? You think Mick Jagger, David Lee Roth? To be honest, I think they're both very charismatic front men. I think it could go either way. Um, and so, so yeah. So I think at that point, it's kind of just a matter of taste. Which one do you prefer? And uh, for me, I think I'm going to go Mick Jagger. Uh, five and a half years. Awesome. So you practice for a while. Um, so that's pretty cool. Chad's going to go with Mick. All right. So we got another vote for Mick. Uh, uh, Pukey, Silas, what about you guys? David Lee Roth or Mick Jagger? Let me know. And I think... And if you haven't voted for Howard or Gerard yet, that's the other one. So we had two votes for Gerard. I can't remember. I don't know if I missed. Yeah, we've got another vote for Mick. So let me get that one real quick. And I'm just checking. I know I said Gerard... And uh, I think Silas said Gerard as well. So I'm pretty sure, unless that was from previously. I'm not sure. No, I, th that, I don't think so. Yeah, Chad's going with Gerard. Okay, cool, cool. So, yeah, I have a feeling it's going to come down to Gerard and Mick. So... Um, yeah, because even if anyone else voted. All right, here we go. We got the, uh, this is for this night. This is the final face-off for tonight. We got Gerard versus Mick Jagger. And I tell you guys what, I will reveal my vote afterwards, but let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to play one last song for you guys, and then we will find out who the winner of part one's bracket is. This, uh, this first part, but I'm going to play one last song for you guys, and then we'll put a nice wrap on all of this. Um, so, yep, down to Mick Jagger and Gerard Way of uh, Rolling Stones and My Chemical Romance. So that's a, that's a good matchup. Again, two very charismatic frontmen, um, slightly different styles, and so, uh, again, it, it, it could really be either one of them. I think they're both great, and so, you know, try to be objective, but I think at some point, it might be a tie, objectively, and so it might just come down to your personal taste, which one, uh, which one you favor more. So, and that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> All right, one last song for you guys. I hope you all enjoy it. This one's called "Move On." i 
Again, that one was called Move On. And I have released that song. So if you'd like to hear that one again, you can find it on Spotify or wherever you like to listen to music. So I'll grab a link for you. And if you'd like to hear that one again, uh, we're about to wrap things up anyway. So um, you'll be able to check that out. Oh, hey, we got Adria tuning in for a bit. Adria, you're tuning in just for the last bit here. I hope you got to hear that song. Um, if you didn't get to hear that song, I'll play one more just for you. But um, but uh, you are here in time for the the last uh, vote for the bracket. <laughs> we'll get into that in just a moment. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> yeah, Chad says, I vote for Pedro. I mean Quincy. <laughs> well, I appreciate your vote, Chad. And uh, yeah, for anyone just wondering, vote for Pedro. Of course, referencing Napoleon Dynamite. Um, some of you might have seen I, I addressed as Napoleon Dynamite for Halloween uh, last year. Um, let's see here. Now... Trying to catch up. Um, okay, LOL, Chad. Hey, Chad. You have some hellos. Hey to Dom. Love this song. Well, thank you, Chad. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, that one was called Move On. And yeah, Adria. Adria, good to see you. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we are kind of wrapping things up. But like I said, you know, I'll, I'll play one more song for you if uh, since you're just tuning in. Um, hey, hey, hey. Here for the for the last. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, Quincy. Yep. Love this song. Thank you, Silas. Appreciate that. Um, some hellos happening. Thank you for the applause. Um, it was awesome. Thank you. Amazing song. Yeah, my pre- I appreciate that. Or uh, uh, my pleasure. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll pull out one more. I'll play one more for you, Adria. Um, but you can uh, you can join in the voting here. We're literally on the uh, last vote. So I'm trying something a little different here. We've done brackets before, but brackets usually go for a long time, and and I'm always trying to like hurry up and wrap it up by the end. So what we did was this is a part one. And we've already made it through the first half, so we, we've got 16 nominees total, but we just did the first eight today. And we voted, we voted, and we are down to these last two. We've got Gerard Way versus Mick Jagger. And so we'll check out a couple clips of them real quick. Um, but since you're just tuning in, you can vote. And whoever wins this will take on the winner of next week. So next week we'll do the other eight, and the winner of that will take on tonight's winner for the ultimate victor um, and see who the champion is for best frontman. That's what we're voting on. We had nominees for, uh, for best frontman, which things to keep in mind, um, yes, singing is a part of that, but we are talking about you know stage presence and how they engage with the audience, how they serve the band, and how they serve the crowd by being entertaining. So, um, so looking into a lot of that. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, Adri says, you don't need to if you have to go. Well, I, I don't mind squeezing in one more song for you because um, I don't think this is going to take long. Um, yeah. So anyway, what do you guys think? Uh, I'll, I'll grab some clips, but if you already know, if you're already decided, feel free to uh, to cast your vote. But we'll uh, let me go to the clips here. <clears throat> so we've got Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones and Gerard Way of My Chemical Romance. And a pretty good matchup. Again, both... S- slightly different styles, you know, um, definitely have more of the, like, 
emotional kind of darker side with uh, um, with My Chemical Romance and with, with Gerard Way. And then you've got kind of the more sort of upbeat and um, uh, kind of, I'm trying to think, sort of exciting, you know, outgoing kind of uh, f- vibe from, from Rolling Stones. And uh, yeah, so we'll... we'll uh, We'll kind of compare these two, but they're both very, you know, they're both kind of theatrical, both very, um, very outgoing with their performances. And so we'll check out a few clips. Uh, this stream is not sponsored by Gatorade, but I think I'd be okay with a Gatorade sponsored. I don't, I don't drink a whole lot of Gatorade, but I mean, if they sponsored me, maybe I'd drink a little more. <laughs> I do exercise a lot, so uh, getting those electrolytes from Gatorade could be beneficial. Yeah, so here's Gerard Way. And I appreciate how he kind of directs the crowd here. Getting them to sing. You know, just really making this an experience for everyone there. And again, making good use of the stage. And I like how he's, he's very expressive, you'll see. You know, again, a little theatrical, but that's good. Very entertaining. Good stuff. Yep, Chad says, I want to vote Gerard, but I have to give it to Mick. Same here, Chad. Got to go Mick. Also, longevity with Mick, too. That's true. Um, I mean, kudos to him. I know there were some clips of them still performing and still moving around really good for his age. And I don't know, I might, I might be in the same boat with you all. Again, like music-wise, I probably connect more with uh, with Gerard. But let's see. Um, let, let's check out some of the Rolling Stones here. Now, this is him. This is in 2013, so he's a bit older here. But again, like still moving around really good for his age. Still a lot of enthusiasm in his performance. Yeah. Let me see something. I think when well, we're talking best frontman, like don't get me wrong, Gerard Way is great, but I think Mick Jagger is a little more iconic, and uh, you know that's not from nothing. <laughs> So again, the the thing about these brackets is, you know, any of these nominees could win on any night, um, and it's just a matter of who shows up and who votes. Uh, but yeah, I I, I got to be honest. I, I think I'm kind of with you guys. Like, if I had to pick which one I I connected with more, which one I favor more, uh, it would definitely be Gerard Way. But if we're trying to be more objective and we're talking best front man, I, I think you got to give Mick Jagger some credit. Like, still rocking, still owning the stage. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'm going to go Mick. Um, let's see here. And and it looks like, yeah, Chad and Pukey are going that way, too. Mick is sort of the the, the blueprint uh, for, front, for a front man. And I think that's a fair point, too. Um, there's probably, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, if Gerard was inspired by someone like Mick Jagger. Um, so we got two more, but if anyone hasn't voted, you know, this can still turn around or this can confirm the winner of tonight, but, uh, Adria or Silas or anyone else who's out there still watching, um, what do you guys think? Are y'all going with Mick Jagger, which is, uh, right here, Rolling Stones? But yeah, I feel like he's putting on a great show for the audience, you know, really moving around the stage, really getting into the music. Yep, and I think Gerard gives a great performance here as well. I skip ahead a little bit. And I like how he engages with the crowd. And to be honest, I, I actually think Gerard might sound better vocally. I 
So I, I think I think he's a fair contender, but um, but I do agree. I, th- I think I think Mick's got you know some icon status to him, and, and there's a reason for that. But yeah, Adria says Mick. Yep, and that's probably going to confirm it because I don't know. You know, even if someone were to vote for uh, for Gerard, I'm not sure that there's enough people to vote to to get it. So there we go, you all. So for tonight's winner, we've got Mick Jagger. And if you want to see who Mick Jagger is going to face up against from the other bracket, be sure to tune in next week. We'll do part two, and uh, we'll see who the winner of this bracket is. They'll face up against Mick Jagger, and that will reveal the ultimate winner of the best frontman bracket. So, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out. Um, Adria, I'm going to play one more song just for you, and uh, and then I think we're going to put a wrap on all of this. Let me see. Uh... Um, I'll tell you what, yeah, I'm just going to play one. This was one that I played earlier in the set, and so I'll, I'll play it again for because I think some of you might not have even heard me when I played this because uh, I played it earlier on. So <laughs> uh, give me a second here. All right, one last song, and then uh, we're going to put a wrap on everything. Hope you all like it. This is A Place to Call Home. Inside of me, concealing what I believe. Potential is obvious, but I'm too scared to set it free. Break down the walls, show me your heart. This is the place where I fall apart. You told to call home some place where I would not feel alone I promised a destiny but I won't trust what I cannot see so mother will tuck me in to this coffin and bury me Thank you. 
And that's going to be it for this evening. But guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Again, that song was called A Place to Call Home. And that is available on Spotify or wherever you like to listen to music. So you can certainly listen to that one again if you enjoyed that song. Uh, Guys, thanks for hanging out with me. And again, this was just part one. So if you want to see who the true winner is, it might be Mick Jagger or maybe someone else from the other bracket will will take the lead. Um, We'll find out. But thank you so much for tuning in. And... um, and uh, feel free to tune in next week to see who the uh, the winner is in part two. Um, just going to share a few things here. Let me catch up with the chat, and then we will put a wrap on all of this. So um, we did get one vote for Gerard. So Silas said Gerard. You know, <laughs> Adrian says, uh, but honestly, uh, uh, but honestly, Stan, listening to the uh, the Rolling Stones, uh, to each their own. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Quincy. Um, but uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, next week is going to be tough. Yeah, next week we got got some good contenders there. Just to give you guys a little sneak peek, so if you're wondering who who is in the bracket, um, let me scroll back. Let me get where you guys can see it. So for next week, we've got Chris Cornell versus James Hatfield. We've got Bruce Dickinson versus Dave Grohl. We've got Freddie Mercury versus Axl Rose, and we've got Alice Cooper versus Jesse Leach. So definitely some good, some more good front men. And again, like I said, you know, on any given given day, any of these front men could could win. It's just a matter of who shows up and who votes, and and uh, and what mood we're in that day, you know. <laughs> so, but um, uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, yeah, hope you're willing to to tune in next time. So. Um, Silas says, nice work. Thank you. Appreciate that, Silas. Adri says, awesome. Nice. Yeah, thank you so much. Oops, typo. Sorry. Uh, I think you might have meant can't stand, but, you know, <laughs> to each their own. Yep, yep. Um, unless it was something else I missed, but yeah. Um, cool, cool. Thank you for the applause, Pukey. Appreciate that. So, guys, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out with me. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the stream. Just a few things to share here. Um, if you'd like to support me in uh, my streams and my music and what I'm doing, I've got a link here for a virtual tip jar, and I certainly appreciate anything that you're willing to, uh, to send my way. Um, I've also got a link for a... Uh, my email list if you'd like to sign up for that. So I've got a new song coming out. Well, not really new. Some of you have heard it. <laughs> it's an old song, but I'm releasing it for the first time. Uh, Brothers to the End. I will be releasing that at the end of this month on April 29th. So if you want to stay tuned, if you want to be notified when I've released that song, uh, you want to be notified when I do these live streams, um, whenever I release new music, whenever I post videos, that kind of stuff, be sure to sign up for my email list. Uh, I just posted a link for that. Um, Adria says, so cool, glad to join you all at the last. Um, well, yeah, you definitely tuned in for the last. And, and Adria, uh, I always appreciate you tuning in. I hope you and your family are doing well. And uh, yeah, if you can swing by for next week, uh, you can uh, join in with the voting next time and uh, be a little more involved with that. Um, but I appreciate you still being able to, to show up, and uh, I hope you're doing well. So uh, yeah, and then lastly, let me just say... Um, my biggest goal, of course, is just building an audience, and uh, I'm looking forward to to releasing a song at the end of this month. I'm really looking forward to releasing more music. In fact, the song I just played, A Place to Call Home, I'm going to be releasing a stripped-down version of that song, um, hopefully next month. So uh, let's see, end of this month, April. So in May, I'm hoping to release a stripped-down version of A Place to Call Home. So keep an ear out for that. That'll be coming your way pretty soon. Um, last few comments here. Uh, Silas says, thanks for the stream. Can't wait for part two. Hope that you and your youth group have a good time. That's right. Yeah. If anyone didn't hear, I'm going away with my church's youth group this weekend. We're going to an event called unplugged and, uh, looking forward to that. Just some time to kind of get away, um, you know, unplug from, uh, from social media and, uh, the internet and, and all that, you know, the distractions of life and just kind of taking some time to, uh, get closer to God, get closer to each other and, uh, and just sort of refresh, recharge and, and, um, you know, just, just be ready to kind of take on, you know, the next chapter in life, you know, whatever's next. So appreciate you all hanging out. Pukey says, have a, a great week, everybody. Um, and, uh, yeah, you too. I, um, I hope you all have a wonderful evening, morning, after night, uh, afternoon, <laughs> night, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world until next time.